So I'm back here and I'm going to scroll back up to this add case, which is in the is set get action if statement. And we have the same list of cases here. We can delete, we can generate the add form, or we can process the form submission. Okay, again, here's where we're starting our errors array. And here's our required validation. And let's look at this first. So the structure that we're going to take for each one of these various validations is we're going to begin with a list of the inputs that need to be validated. So we start this required array, and in the array, we enter the names of the different inputs that need to be validated. Now the reason we're doing this is because we're going to use the same logic on each one to validate it, so we can just loop through these items and perform the same logic on each one using a for each loop. And you see that for the other validations, we do the same thing for numbers. And then if we scroll down a little bit and look at alphanumeric, you'll see we begin with an array as well. Our next step is to loop through each item in that array. And then we grab the value from the post array. So again, the post array is what gets submitted when we use a post form. And this input name here is the value of the item in the array. So the first time that this loops through, input name will be the string first. And so we're looking at the first key in the post array. We're also running this through the trim function in order to remove any spaces on either side of the value. Now we're doing this to make sure that the user doesn't input a set of spaces because we don't want to consider those valid either. And if that is happening, we're not going to know the number of spaces that the user entered. So we want to just clean all of that up so we can trim it down to the actual text that gets submitted. If it's just a bunch of spaces, then that will be nothing. And so when we compare it to nothing here, this will return true and we'll add an error that says, please enter a value for, and then this first time around, our input name is first. The next time through this loop, our input name is going to be username. Again, we'll get the post variable for that. We'll trim any extra spaces on the ends. And then if it doesn't exist, that is it equals an empty string, then we'll add another error that says please enter a value for username. And we'll do the same thing for password. So if we go back to the browser and look at our list of errors, you see that we had two errors that match this. It says please enter a value for first and please enter a value for password. We did enter admin for username, so we're not getting an error there. Okay, I'm going back to the editor here. Now let's look at our numeric validation. So we're going to loop through birth year and shoe size and we're assigning this array to the numbers variable here. And then we're going to loop through each one using for each, just like we did with the required validation. We're going to grab the post variable, just like we did before, and we'll trim it. And in pretty much any case, trimming is a good idea. If we think that the user might want spaces at the beginning or at the end of their text, then we might want to forego this trim. But in most cases, if there are spaces at the beginning or the end of a string, it's a mistake, so we want to correct that here. In the case of a number, a number won't validate if there's a space to either side of it, so we want to make sure to clean it up in particular for this case. So our first step is seeing if the item exists at all, so we're checking it against an empty string, because we don't want to run a numeric validation on an empty string. In this case, an empty string is okay. The reason we're doing this check before performing the numeric validation is because we already checked any required checks up here. So if we had a requirement for birth year, we would throw an error here if birth year was empty. And so if it was empty, we wouldn't need to run any other validation errors on it because the form submission wouldn't be successful because we're already throwing an error for birth year not existing. So in some cases, validation on an empty string will throw an error, which we don't want, in other cases, it's just taking up processing power. So we can skip this processing if the string is actually empty. In this first case, the input name is birth year, and there is a value for this. If we jump back to the browser, you'll see we put in this whimsical FTSA string. If I jump back to the editor here, this will pass because it doesn't equal an empty string. So we'll move on to the next step. And then we're going to use a PHP function called isNumeric to check to see if it's a number. And if it isn't a number, notice we're using the negation operator here, which is the exclamation mark. We're going to add an error that says, please enter a number for input name. Now this isn't perfect because, for example, a birth year should be an integer. And if we're talking about people that were born in the last couple hundred years, 
there will always be four numbers in that integer. So if someone put 10.4 in this box, then it would pass. That said though, the majority of problems here will be with someone inputting the wrong information into the form on accident. And so this will check to make sure that it's not a string and throw an error if it is. So we loop through this with birth year and we're going to do the same thing with shoe size. Now again with shoe size, we're probably not going to have anything that has more than two digits to the left side of the decimal point and not more than one digit to the right side. But again, this is just a simple validation to both help users know if they've made a mistake and also to make sure data isn't completely wonky when it goes into the database. Okay, 